Of course, a big source of the unrest in Egypt is high food prices. That is what sparked much of what's going on in North Africa off in the first place. Well, Christoph Eyeball is a founding partner and head of trading at Tiberius Asset Management. You've got $2.5 billion in assets pretty much invested in commodities. Chris, thanks so much for, for joining us from our London newsroom at the moment. Quite a bit going on, as, as you know, in the Middle East. Um, and I do know that you don't necessarily think Egypt is the is going to have the biggest impact, at least in terms of commodities prices. But it's pretty understandable that when it comes to news in Egypt or, or political turmoil in that region, that you know we would see some amount of movement in the oil markets. I mean, absolutely. Uh, the situation in Egypt, and we've seen that with the neighboring countries, that was a big spillover. And everyone is afraid of that. what we've seen in Tunisia, what we've seen in Egypt, that might be transferred over to Saudi Arabia or other countries that are much more important in regards to oil supply, for example. But if you just put Egypt on the landscape, Egypt is not a very important player when it comes to commodities production or commodities consumption. But we were talking about Egypt's impact on commodity prices from oil over to wheat. Where do you see their real impact. I mean, for wheat, I don't see the big impact. As I mentioned before, it's like Ivory Coast. Cocoa will always find its way out of Ivory Coast, be it Ghana or be it the other neighboring countries. And the same accounts for wheat when we're talking about Egypt. Wheat will find its way into Algeria and the other neighboring countries. Looking at uh, Egypt from a geopolitical um, commodity supply and demand perspective, Egypt is important when it comes to logistics and to the channel itself, the Suez Channel. This is the big uh, bottleneck here. If their political unrest and the political instability stays on, there might be the danger of a shutdown of the channel. And we've had that basically in the Israeli-Egypt uh, wars in the 50s, then the Yom, Yom Kippur wars later on. We had that problem and basically that, that is an impact on the energy market because oil and all other commodities and raw materials will have to be shipped around southern Africa and that means delays and that will be an impact. Um, coming back to the oil prices, why oil prices are trading higher these days, um, again, as I mentioned, it's a problem problem of um, will the, the latest riots and, and revolution itself that we're seeing in Tunisia and Egypt be transferred over to Saudi Arabia? And that actually, that might be a big impact because we have here a very strong oil supplier in the whole region. And so potential... this is what we believe the market itself is currently um, playing and that's why prices are skyrocketing. So really it's the potential risk of contagion that is going to have right. an impact on oil prices. Where do you see oil prices ending the year, Chris? We actually believe that it will be hovering around $90, $95 to $100. We might see it popping up above $105, $110. But we don't see all to sustain and to see those high levels that we, what we've seen in 2008. There, we just don't have uh, the scarcity that we've seen before because the oil market overall is pretty well balanced. Uh, there is good supply coming in. We currently actually see for the WTI contract that Cushing shows massive uh, stock positions and all. Hence, we don't feel that oil is very short in the market. All right, let's turn to uh, sort of the soft market for commodities. Let's talk about grains, right. talk about wheat, talk about cotton. I mean, every time I look at the headlines, it seems as if we are hitting record highs. But you don't actually see this so much as a support supply issue. I mean, the agricultural markets were fundamentally attractive in the beginning of 2010. Uh, what we're currently seeing mainly in markets such as cotton and, and sugar and also to some extent in wheat is pure speculation. It's completely detached from its fundamentals and it's in a way uh, market speculators that are forcing markets higher, shorts that are being squeezed out of the market. I mean, the best example is cotton. Look at the cotton spreads. There's backwardation on a one year's term, which is totally unjustifiable. And we feel that it's about time to leave especially those soft commodities and some of the grains because they're detached from its fundamentals and it doesn't make sense to be invested anymore. Now, my understanding though is that there were some real supply concerns, right? We've seen in China, we've seen um, bad adverse weather sort of impacting crops in China and elsewhere throughout Asia. Is that really, when you talk about speculators driving some of those prices up, is that the, the spreading of news, sort of blowing up the news that really isn't that important? Are they or you know, is that having a real impact on supply? 
No, most often what we see is we see a underlying real fundamental uh, fundamental supply situation or supply disruption. And you're right when you're mentioning China, when you're mentioning Australia, and so on and so forth. And to some certain degree, it's justified that prices are going higher. But because of how the market has changed, so many uh, trend-following systems that are just jumping on a trend, they're just increasing the amplitudes, uh, the swings of the volatility itself. And this is what causing these extreme um, uh, outbreaks to the upside as well as to the downside. Whereas we feel at a certain level we just have uh, reached a, a fundamental unjustifiable limit and this is what we clearly see in cotton, sugar, wheat and to some certain extent in soy um, as I just mentioned before. Okay, so way overbought at the moment. Well, let's talk about another commodity that's sort of been the kind of flight to safety trade gold, not actually doing well over the last few days. Sort of a surprise, but that was actually one of your forecasts is that gold would back off of its current highs. Yeah, we always uh, were afraid of gold just being um, a pure um, masterpiece of, uh, of investment speculation. I mean, if you look at the inflow uh, from the ETFs, if you look at the non-commercial positions um, on the CFTC, you can clearly see that gold is a reflection of speculation. Um, overall, we feel that people have taken off liquidity from gold because there is much more attractive commodities that do have uh, fundamental, uh, interesting fundamentals such as base metals or like the platinum group metals and we've seen some inflow into those materials mainly into the base metal space and this is what we have recommended to our investors lately to switch out from the precious sector into uh, the industrial metals complex and we keep this trade on for probably the next couple of months. You, Chris, talk to me just very quickly. We talked about geopolitical risk. Let's talk about regulatory risk. You mentioned speculators. We just went through uh, Davos, as you pronounce it out there. Um, we saw Sarkozy speaking about regulation of this market as it relates to speculators. What's going to change this year on that front? I mean, to be fairly honest, we expected last year that 2011 will be the big year in regards to market regulation. Uh, but lately, uh, the CFTC has announced that they will delay their um, new rules and legislation probably until 2012. And to be fairly honest, it's en vogue to, from a political perspective, to blame someone. And the scapegoat, obviously, for all of the market turmoil is always the speculators. And hence, um, they're trying to implement laws that are being liked by the population in general. So far, and this has been the observation of the last couple of years, there's only been talks. Real implementation of legislation or laws we haven't seen yet. Um, what we're expecting for the U.S., 2012 will be the year probably when we see the first serious impact of legislation for the European markets. We might uh, see something a little bit earlier, but definitely not within the next six months. All right, Chris, thanks so much.